which is still my ha my finest AA memory. It's just Rob's face as Holly Oaking is being described to him. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, the old oil house is proud to present to you once again the lock in, because we're not the tag team champions of the world in any way, shape, or form. Speak for oh. yourself. Alright then, you are the tag team champions of the world. <gasps> Rob, you are now the intercontinental champion. And then Hulk Hogan, we're coming for you next! Oh, not gonna book a team. <laughs> <laughs> book a tea, verb. Do you invent call a white person by the wrong colour? Um, <laughs> I love that clip. <laughs> The fact that he put some effort into it as well. Oh, he really. Yeah. And then you just see the. Oh God! <laughs> what I'd like to have seen is the camera in the <laughs> office with a record in it, and just the sight of just one man just slumping in his chair. Ah oh, shit! Is this still live? Yep. Ah oh, shit! <laughs> you <laughs> you do see the... Booker T's eyes go wide, don't they? Yeah. And the hand comes it's up. the fact that he instantly turns around. It's just like, yeah, you fucked up. It'll be like that bit, man. Come on, it'll just be, it'll just be like. They'll just be like somebody in the back just going, WHAT?! <laughs> I wonder if they actually got loads of complaints over that. I have no idea. You know what, in all honesty, I'm just going to say, do you think your average wrestling fan at that time would have been bothered by that word? No. Not right. in hmm. Well, Lydia, I'm going to introduce you now using the power of cards against humanity. We'll start over here. And we will ask... Rob. Rob. According to Cards Against Humanity, your question is, what did the US airdrop to the children of Afghanistan? Your answer is a micropenis. <laughs> it's Rob. <laughs> <coughs> Say hello, Rob. <coughs> I don't want to after that. And next to him is Stu. And Stu, oh dear God. <laughs> Go on, just say it. Stu's question is, how am I maintaining my relationship status? And according to Cards Against Humanity, Stu is maintaining his relationship status with drinking alone. Yeah, it helps. <laughs> I picked up two there, the other one was Smegma. <laughs> and as always, I am Griffey, your host, and my question is, when Pharaoh remained unmoved, Moses called down a plague of... getting naked and watching Nickelodeon. <laughs> <laughs> I think throughout this uh, this episode, we might just quickly keep throwing ourselves into Cards Against Humanity. Oh, really well. Just because you mentioned Nickelodeon, can I raise a point? Go ahead. I don't know if people have watched uh, like the episode Just Gone of Turtles. I am way behind, I'm afraid. But I'm, I'm not going to spoil anything, I'm just going to say the following. <coughs> well, what, season two or season one, nearly 20 episodes in? Mm -hmm. Finally, we get the shell razor. Oh, that's taking its time. That thing's been in the start opening sequence since day one. Mm -hmm. And finally, we got the shell razor. That's pretty kick ass. Was it worth the wait? To an extent. I like it. I still want the Lego one. <laughs> yeah, you're not the only one there. <clears throat> well, before we jump on to getting things going and starting questions, first of all, I'm going to say, Rob, pick one each, and then tell me something you want to talk about. I drink to forget. <laughs> what, what do you drink to forget, Rob? What do you drink to forget? <laughs> oh, this is so hard. <laughs> <clears throat> no, please, continue. <laughs> oh, it's so many wrong ways. <clears throat> Getting so angry that you poop a boner. So you're getting so angry that I pooped a boner? Is it not pop a boner? I'm more interested in how you would poop a boner. Well, it'd have, it'd have to be in there to start with. <laughs> well, you know, are you there? You've been holy over the night before. Uh, you got quite tense. Thanks, Turbo. Snip. Snip and keep. Oh, that's how tired I am. I can't even read. I'm going to use, um, what do you call it here, a, a thing from a certain film. In this case, you're pooping your donor because you keep what you kill. <laughs> anyway. So, t tell me something you want to talk about, Rob. Bring me a topic. Some item of conversation that you enjoy. I want some fresh hot topic. No, no hot not, topic. Not hot topic. I want no, a fresh, no. warm topic. Straight from the veritable frying pan of news. I want some. I want it right in my face, so oh. I get third degree news burns. Smother my face in hot Rob topic. <laughs> okay, that's maybe going to do that. Something, something fresh from the oven of Rob. Um, oh, surprise, surprise. Um, I'm doing my clinical experiment again. Yes, yes you are. I have started that. Wow, that's almost been like a year. 
Two years, actually. Two two years. Was it two? Wow. Um, Really? Really? In 2011. I'm just really terrified because I was convinced it was last year. Oh my god. Uh, so yeah, um, I've already put up a video <coughs> yeah. that explains things. Um, I've already put up the first few images on mm-hmm. Facebook. I've already got a few people interested in a few of them. And where would you find these images on Facebook? Oh, Rob? Under Rob's Lenten Experiment. Cheap off. <laughs> um, doing it for the Cancer Research UK because... Uh, my brother died of cancer um, at the beginning of uh, February, so this is all to get money for all those nice people who made live a little bit longer. So yeah. um, it's a worthwhile charity, and I really, really want to make some money for this. So I will be pimping it out something chronic. Um, going to ask a lot of other people to pimp it out as well. So if anyone would like to help by sharing statuses, all that sort of stuff, be much appreciated. Um, but what I do <laughs> say in the video, and what I will say now, is if you are going to help out by pimping stuff out and that. Um, please do it with the intention of buying something when the option comes. So the amount of people who helped me out last year just by encouraging me and liking things. Well, last year, I say two Two years ago, so you've also lost I, I'm not the only one. Um, yeah, uh, so many people helped me, and then it, when it came to buying, nobody was actually buying images. I've sold maybe 11, 12 of the images. Mm. Two of them went for around a tenner, and I made 46 quid, 45 quid for the charity. Yeah out of 46 images, so yeah. that was pretty deflating. So I would really, really like to make a lot more money for the charity this year. Um, I've already had a few people saying they want to buy the images, which is good. Mm-hmm. Uh, and a lot of people uh, liking it and pimping it out, so... Are you putting it through eBay again? Or? eBay again, yep. Okay. It just makes it simpler all around. Yeah, completely, completely. Um, I can't remember if I mentioned this in the video, but the postage that you pay for um, the images, um, if the postage is sort of less than what you send. The rest of the remainder will be going to charity. It's not like I keep anything. It all goes yeah, to the charity. Um, so yeah, please help out with that. <coughs> It'd be really, really appreciated. Good man. Yeah, I must admit, I think I'm doing some pretty good work this time around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I've seen a couple of things I'm going to be diving onto. Literally. Yes. Now I'm actually going to dive through my screen onto the eBay listing and just sitting there going, <laughs> That could be quite worrying. I just want the picture of me in the old hammer. I still have the picture of me riding a rabbit. Yeah, that was one of the better ones I did that year. No, that, that was my favourite. Yeah, the I, one I, of you and North Hammer, that was, I'm quite proud of that one because that was the first one I actually did with a proper inking brush. Hmm. Hmm. It was quite cool. Yeah. So, people of the interwebs, if you want to deny Adam his happiness, Yes. <laughs> yes, if you want to deny me my happiness, bid more than three quid, because Feck knows I, I can't afford more than three quid for the book. So. Well, should we move over to Mr. Stu then? Yes. Stu! Hello. Read me a Cards Against Humanity question and answer, and then, black one's question, white one's answer. And then, give me, and then give me a topic. Okay. Hmm, so um, the Smithsonian Museum of Natural History has just opened an interactive exhibit on... Actually, that's, well, that's kind of boring, the, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Oh. That's completely feasible. Yeah, that, that is feasible. Yay, I broke cards against humanity! God damn it! <laughs> By coming up with something which may have actually <coughs> happened, or could happen! Oh. Well, you can just give me a goddamn topic if you so wish. Um, I'm going to go with the obvious here. Mm-hmm. Toy fair, toy fair, toy fair, toy fair. Toy Fair. Toy Fair happened since we last chatted? No, Toy Fair has not happened since we last chatted. Yes, it did. Or since we last did a show. No, didn't. It did. Decided it hasn't. Don't make me fight you. In the arena? No, on a video game and then when the loser ties you blow up. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I knocked over the shelf of toys. You must kill me. Um, you can always just press the button. No one has dared <laughs> press the button a second time. I have honestly, I'm taking a slightly. I have never seen. I have never read that issue. I recently watched a certain comic reviewer's review of it at an event, and instantly went, "I'm kind of ashamed of that." Because <laughs> <laughs> it's just like the entire time somebody just could have gone, oh, it's "Megatron's button." <laughs> Way. <laughs> but no. And the prime's on a floppy disk. Um, you mean um, Emperor Megatron? 
from the series that's coming after the Transformers Prime. No. <laughs> no. Unlimited fusion power. Because he's talked to them. Who's them? Them. They are the ones that knows. Tell us, Rob. Who's them? I'm going to hide now. <laughs> but we want to know about them. We also want to know about Toy Fair. Tell us about Toy Fair. Toy Fair, yeah. Toy Fair, Toy Fair, Toy Fair. I can't even say it probably because there's that much fun stuff there. Um, I think a lot of people agree this is like one of the best years we've had for Transformers announcements. Yes. Because I'm just going to go straight for the juggler with this. And because he's got the picture there, I'm going to have to wobble about it. Two foot tall Metroplex! He does look really nice. Who the fuck saw this coming? Oh, from, no, did not see it And he's two foot tall, how could we have missed that? <laughs> That's gigantic. It is the fact that he does have articulation from the looks of it as well. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, so triple probably, changer as well. You could probably pose him in some really nice poses. He's freaking, this is what got me. It's A, it's Metroplex. Mm-hmm. B, it's two foot tall. C, he's scaled so legends work with him like a city. Yeah. That's I might have to buy some legends. Um, and the one that just blew, well, there's two things that blow my mind. Mm-hmm. One is he has articulated eyes. What? Yeah, apparently he's got articulated eyes. Now, I don't know how that works going off them pitches, but I get the feeling that they might have done it so his light pipe articulates. Nice. I don't know how you'll do it. Like Tanko or Beast Machines. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and also, you can see on that picture there, there's a little red thing in his chest. That sticker has Optimus Prime and a few other Autobots in it. As if they're inside. Mm, I love that. <laughs> this is... I, I love how they are shamelessly promoting it on the boxes. Biggest Transformer ever! Which yeah. I'm confused by, because I thought, I thought Max was two and a half. No, no, this guy is bigger than two. Than... So how big was Max? Was he one and a half? Foot tall? He must have been one and a half. I always thought he was two and a half. Yeah. Oh, I've always told people he was two and a half foot. But yeah. it looked good. I have issues. Go on, then. First of the proportions of him do my head in. Right. Um, I don't like the length of his legs compared to the length of his torso. Mm-hmm. It really stands out. I also really don't like his head. Okay. Not as much the, the head is based on the... Well, most of it's based on the... Oh, so it's all the mm-hmm. Not the fact that the head is sculpted by or anything, but because the head does this weird... Looks like chocolate. Yes. Like <laughs> um, I don't know if you've seen pictures of it, but the head does this weird thing for transformation. In the G1 toy, it dropped. Yeah, it went right into the chest, yeah. didn't it? In this, it moves forward. Mm-hmm. So you have a giant top of the head sticking out with the antennae. And you can just see his eyes looking into his chest. I am mm. not a fan. Really not a fan you of that. You can kind of see it there, actually, now you mention it. Oh, yeah, in the background there. Yeah. I'm not a fan of it. I don't think this is bad, and seriously, if you want this, you Hello. have you have my <laughs> blessing. I, I, I really want to snap that up. Mm. Going off what their release date is, I'm asking you know, the lovely Mr. Slick nicely for Christmas present. Is that is that actually how it transforms, or is that like a mistransformation that you tend to get into these things? All the photos they've seen, I think there's maybe a bit of a mistransformation. Yeah. Because there usually is. Mm. But because to me it seems like his upper body should drop. Yes, because you've got that weird bit. Yeah. That torso like section. It's more flush, but... Yeah. You know, we've literally seen photos from a toy fair. Oh, yeah. I don't yeah. think they were letting people pick him up and look at it. Uh, it's it's yeah. probably some poor guy who had 15 tables to set up in yeah. like half an hour. And this big chopping two-foot fucker was the least of his concerns. Yeah. As I, say, I don't think this is bad in the slightest. I think this is very good. I mm-hmm. think this is a surprise. I also, and I hate to be the doomsayer, I also think it's a terrible idea. Yeah? Go on. Yeah. This thing won't sell. I do have a horrible feeling it's not going to sell very well, because it's no. 125 bucks, I think. Yeah. Been. So that's 125 That's, that's the roundabout area yeah. that said 125. So it's going to sell 125 quid. Oh, yeah, God. Yeah, it's going to be dollars <laughs> somebody, a quid. Somebody said that to me, they like, oh, it's going to be 125 quid. I was like, oh, no, that's a dollar, it'll work out cheaper. I was like, yeah, you don't know how to you can anything. No, it, it will they be. just change that symbol at the front. Yeah, just take the dollar symbol off and just stick a, mm-hmm. <laughs> stick a new name over the old name. Oh, sorry, hang on. No, um, <laughs> But this is 125 quid, which is something I can't afford to spend. I cannot physically afford to spend 125 quid. Oh, yeah, I, I, as I said, I've said this like it would be nice for Christmas, but I don't expect it. No. Um, and... I think this thing, this thing's going to do a Unicron, is the best way I can put it. It's going to sit on a shelf, there'll be four of them, sitting on a shelf until it gets moved into a discount store. Mm. Which is a shame, a massive shame. I think it will sell... It's going to sell well. Near Christmas, it's, it, it's going to be a good one for Christmas. Because oh, yeah. parents will go, well he wants a big Transformer. Mm-hmm. Get him the biggest Transformer. Yeah. 
I think the fact that they put a bigger transformer kind of on the front of it. I think it'll sell with um, sort of die-hard collectors. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, completely. Uh, they're they're going to snap it up. No, you say. But here's a question for you. What? How much is that going to cost to ship? Sure. Yeah. Here's another question for you. If that doesn't get a US release, how much is it going to cost to ship? How much is the import tax going to be? Mm. That that scales that right out. If it if this gets a, a US only release, doesn't come out over here. There's no way anyone over here is going to buy it. Like, like even like Kapow trying to get them, they're still going to be paying. They're still going to be mm. getting them from Hasbro US or from a middleman. Mm-hmm. That's still going to raise because it's the it's the literal postage on it. Yeah. Two foot toy plastic figure in a box. Yeah. You look at it. It's going to be about thirty quid shipping. If not more. Yeah. No, you know, completely in the realms of realism. Yeah, it's it's something that I probably will never afford. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's something that I will probably look at and go, oh, I really want. Yeah. But honestly, I really like it and uh, applaud like with many of the things that we're going to talk about from here. Well done, Hasbro, for yeah, even oh, even, for yeah. even attempting this in completely because that's part of what you're me. Yeah. Current I'm, economic climate, and they're going. Yeah, let's do a fucking two foot tall robot. Yeah, that's not the only thing we're doing. <laughs> so, shall we move along? Go on, go on, pick some up because. Because I think there's one thing here that uh, we need to jump on, and that was kind of it. Is it? Is, is, is it the person that's sat next to him? Yep. <laughs> Rob, I will this. be getting that one. Rob, do, do you want to uh, take this little bit? It's Springer, and it looks awesome. It also looks roshi. Yeah, it, it does. It is it last does. stand of the frickin' wreckers. His uh, his face is uh, is quite roshi. I mean, from all the pictures I've seen, he's uh, he's quite a bit skinnier than the. The last time of the records version, mm-hmm. but, but look at the design. Nice. It. Yeah. it is. It's almost like they pulled him right out of the comic. Yeah. Yeah. He's, I was he's, saying, if he was if he wasn't so skinny, I would have said that they just scanned in the comic <laughs> <laughs> and just built him from that because it's beautiful. It really is. Uh, we, next month, we need to ask a certain person some questions. <laughs> to, to be honest, Becca um, turned around and said she was going to buy it and then try and get Nick Roche to sign it. Oh, that's a cool mm-hmm. idea. And I, I said no because that would mean it had to stay in the packaging. No, he's got a big flop bit in his chest. That motherfucker's getting played with. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it too. <gasps> he's a triple changer. Get yeah. three. No. Four. One to sign, and then one in every... <laughs> no, that's going a little crazy. Yep. Maybe because you're saying saying crazy. Yet again, Hasbro. Hey, let's do some triple changers. Oh, crazy. You want crazy? <laughs> How's about a Voyager Blitzwing? Oh, I am so in love with that Blitzwing. Because uh, that Blitzwing has multiple faces. It, it does. It yeah, does. it's got because the pictures from Toy Fair are with the with the like large eye slash mm. monocle, and then the official promo pictures look more like the traditional Blitzwing face. Nice. Also, so, I cannot for the life of me see how that changes. It's, it might be like a Rodimus thing, where the top of his head opens up. Mm. Maybe. And then it flips yeah. over, but until we get some in hand photos, somebody gets a play with. Mm. But either way, yeah, that, Blitzwing. That it's very nice. I would not have guessed there was going to be a Blitzwing. Would never have guessed. Nah. No, 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 but just because you've gone past there, go back on to the Metro Black Box. <laughs> now, obviously they're saying this is scaled to legend, so it's pretty a uh, pretty good idea that everybody who's crawling on Metroplex there will be released as a legend. Yes. What you don't see behind that dude's hand is Sandstorm. No. Which basically, from what we've seen of other pictures, is a repaint of Springer. Yes. From the Voyager figure. You know what? Fucking bring it. I'll have that. I like the fact that it's Sandstorm as a repaint of, of Springer. Mm. Springer, who turned robot to car to helicopter, Sandstorm from robot to car to helicopter. Makes sense, doesn't it? But they've remoulded him so he's a jet. But he's uh, he's like a twin. He's, he's like a jet. VTOL. Uh, yeah, I was going to say he's like a. I don't know what the hell you call him? But he's like a yeah, one of those. Reverse VTOL. Yeah. But they, even then, just doing that little tweak that works. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in fact, I'm happy enough with that. It's, it's quite cool. I love that uh, artwork for Metroplex. Oh, come on. Repaid. Metro Titan. Oh, yes. <laughs> Every, there's been a rumour of that, hasn't there? Yeah, there's been a rumour. No, rumour has popped up because there's a video, and in that video, of somebody staring at the Metroplex with their camera phone going, ooh, 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 you can hear Hasbro executive type person in the background going, yeah, so we're thinking about, we're going to give this a repaint as a Metro Titan somewhere down the line. So, ah. Why not? They've got them all. <laughs> Which is an interesting fact to me, because it's become apparent that the current run of IDW Spotlights <laughs> are coming out to be packaged with the toys. <gasps> no! Right? And the IDW comics have really hammered home the idea of Metroplex and the Metro Titans of late. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What? Yeah, no, 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 this is perfect thinking for me. I can see exactly what's going on. Hasbro is keeping a very close eye on what's going on. Changing, not changing, but herding the story the way they want to go so these things sell. 
It's not a bad idea. Yeah. It's a good idea. But it doesn't in any way feel like the old Marvel days of, oh, why don't you introduce yourself, stunt team? Well, yeah. I'm Blackjack, and get in that red burger. It, it doesn't feel like that. It's just I like, oh, yeah, exactly. there's these Metro Titans, and then Hasbro just goes, oh, shit, you going to do a figure one. Well, I think it's a bit more, we're doing these figures. Hmm. Can you get them into the comics? But it's not like they're sitting there, like, fucking waging them in. No, 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 they're not. I mean, it's one of those things that only became apparent from this toy fair. Um, but what interests me Go on. is twofold. <gasps> One, we're getting a spotlight trail cutter. Mm-hmm. And there's a spotlight hoist coming. Mm-hmm. Hoist is traditionally a repaid trail, 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 oh, trail cutter. Trail breaker. Now I find this really interesting because of another story that we've got here. A story about bot shops. Prepare mm-hmm. yourself here for some serious conspiracy. This is going to okay. get good. Should I go get my tinfoil hat now? Oh, yes. Because the bot shops that we've seen, there is three, count them, three new bot shops coming. Right. Right? And they all fit into the idea of dragons that Transformers Prime has. We have Twin Strike, otherwise known as Sinner Twin, from the Firecons, looking like his Twin Strike counterpart. We have uh, uh, Scourge from Transformers Cybertron, for all bizarre reasons, who looks modified to fit in. And then we've got Cyndasaur, the Firecon, with a different look to his G1 version. It's G2, isn't it? Uh, no. There's new Firecons coming. They just happen to be bot shots. No. Or do you just mean in general? In general. Mm-hmm. We're getting new Firecons. You wouldn't surprise us with the, with well, the push behind the Predacon, yeah, wouldn't it? You get the Predacons coming out. The Terracon, Terracon combiner. <laughs> I'm still amazed by you, I'm getting that. Mm-hmm. I'm seeing, I'm sure we are getting, in the Transformers Prime line, a whole new line of Firecons. Mm. Mm. <laughs> All I need now is someone in IDW to say, well, here's Spotlight Cyndasaur, and I'm just going to jack off. <laughs> right there and then. I don't care where I am. I could be on a bus. don't care. I'm just going to go for it. I hope nobody tells him when I'm near. <laughs> I will cover the walls in sticky white love paste. There you go. Moving on, please. Anyway, um, well, since you're mentioning the... Spotlight, should we mention the, the Spotlight figures that have done Yes, yeah, I think we should. The Spotlight figures are a collection. Uh, well, there's Megatron in here. Hmm. Da, 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 da. Terrible picture of Megatron. It's Megatron in his Gundam. Oh, sorry, yeah, his stealth bomber mode. See, I'm, I'm not entirely sold on the stealth bomber Megatron. I think it looks quite cool, but not incredibly sold. No? No, it's, I think it's the. The gun blady army thingy. I'm not quite sure. Gun blady army thingy. Yeah, I'm not quite sure whether that's supposed to be a blade or a gun. <laughs> it's a gun. Hmm. Uh, you have red spotlight Megatron, have you not? Yes. It is a world shattering gun <laughs> in immense proportions. Check. Check. Out of interest, do you read spotlight Megatron? Yes. Did you read that like a certain death clock? Oh, yes. Ah, okay. Just check. <laughs> Check. check. <laughs> um, now, the other one from the spotlight. Mm hmm. Have up on the screen there. Yeah, is the is the picture of the close up of the face close up? Is that a the prime toy or is that no a spotlight that's, toy? That's a that's a Ryan Pax. Because if it is the Orion Pax without the face plate, mm-hmm. I really like that. Yeah. I, I just love the whole thing of him getting the new body. It's like ah, mouth. That's different. Mouth's <laughs> ribs. I'm thinking of getting one myself. <laughs> <laughs> I like this figure. I also have noticed that it's a little bit animated. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Does it not remind anyone else of Transformers Animated? No. A little bit. Like, it's like animated could put through the G1 ringer. Yeah. I suppose. It's, a, it's what, the what chest you? piece, isn't it? I think so. I think so. Hmm. I, I, I actually like it. Um, I love it. I think it's oh, I'm it's wonderful. certainly interested. Like all of the ones from this, I'm interested in. See, I don't know <laughs> For me, obviously, limited amount of space, mm-hmm. um, very limited funding, but um, no, I just, I don't know, I've got my um, War for Cybertron Prime, yes. who I absolutely love. He is my one Prime mm-hmm. that I've got. Um, and the only other Prime I'm even contemplating getting would be a, uh, a masterpiece, just so mm. I could have him stood with for uh, a very yes. Masterpiece but, MP10. It'd be nice to have that one, but... Yeah, well, it wouldn't it? Doesn't look like it's ever going to happen. Oh, it will. Eventually. Not at the <laughs> price they're uh, voting for. It. 100 quid. 
Yeah, uh, what, 100 at least? I think it was 120, 130. Mm -hmm. Jeez. But no, that's a really, really nice app. If I, you know, if it wasn't for the fact that I have next to no space, I probably wouldn't point out. Oh, did you go for it anyway? Mm. Wife can live outside. <laughs> God! Yeah, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> yeah, good lad. Considering um, what we were talking about earlier, I'm not saying anything. <laughs> I will, I will crawl it back on a subject then. There's uh, two of the announced already then? Yes. Yeah, so there's Bumblebee mm -hmm. and there's Trailbreaker. Yeah. Definitely getting a Trailbreaker. Yeah. Because it's a deluxe Trailbreaker. Some, certainly somebody I know may have helped with that. Um, <laughs> um, but the only thing that Bumblebee... Oh, well, I'm sorry, Stu. Did, you, you didn't say that. Well, no, that that was really quiet. I, I I'm didn't... just going to leave that hanging. Um, the only thing that bugs me about these, and I know it's been said elsewhere, and I'm not like sitting like, I'm the guy that the hands blowing and booing into bear. It's it just, it's, well, it's Prime wow. Megatron and Bumblebee again. Yeah. And I know they're like a big pull and it's nice to have Megatron as he's playing, but part of me sitting there really thinking, do I really want to buy another Bumblebee? You know, or I really want to, yeah, it's Orion Pax, but it still feels like I'm just buying another Prime. I think in this case, excuse me, <laughs> I think in this case you've got a bit more of a pull because this is the new generation of generations, mm. so to speak. This is where things are starting to go from this point on. Mm. So, I mean, that old Classics Prime is a great figure. Oh, yeah. But he is showing his age now. A little bit, but I still like it. Oh, yeah, yeah. A great figure. One of the highlights of my transforming collecting. That, that thing, I love it. Just need to bring a G3 trailer on him and he's back. Pretty much. Pretty much. Uh, which costs twice as much as the actual figure did. But anyhow, anyhow. I think yeah, it's certainly going to be interesting to see where they go from this point mm. on. But I'm certainly interested in like the designs and the work that's coming out. It does look good. Mm -hmm. But as I said, get by it. Come on, another get. <laughs> that that knee jerk reaction for me at the moment is oh, Prime Max again. Yeah, I, if, I know if they're mean. starting to do stuff using the um, the IDW sort of designs, I think they're going to try. Really, I would really like a uh, Rotten. Mm. I, I, I really, I really like the way they've uh, designed them for yeah. the more than meets the eye. I want a Magnus. Oh yes. This little frown button. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then giant cannons in his shoulder. <gasps> Has everyone read more than me to the I-13? Uh, which one? 14. Ones? The one for the holograms? Yes. Right, you've read it. Have you read it? 13, yeah. Sure, um, do I do it? Yes, I'm going for do it. If you haven't read it, tough. Um, did anyone else just utterly lose their shit when, tra when uh, Magnus transformed into his truck mode? <laughs> I had to put it down. I was laughing that hard. <laughs> the fact they were all jumping on it. I thought he was upside down. <laughs> I love the Beautiful. Idea. I love the idea of Will getting uh, Magnus wrecked. Yeah. This is weapons grade Nuculon. Just when he's sitting on it, like, well, I don't fill this. I'm going to you left your filters on. Yeah, of course I have. I'll turn them off. Well, I think I'm going to... We did, killed him! I really like the... Um, the conversation between him and Swerve. Yeah. yeah. And I thought it was beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I mean, the, all the hilarity in the issue, and then you have that. Yeah. It was just so nice. Yeah. And the fact that his um, his hollow projection was Verity. Yeah. yeah that, that was, was fantastic. I squeed a little at that. Well, yeah, I squeed to start with, but I started thinking about it. That's really quite... Yeah, that's... Upsetting. That's There's, there's some kind of... Kind of implies a bit of a connection between the two, even if he's not willing to admit it. Well, she was called the Monkey Magnus. Mm -hmm. He was Uncle Magnus, mm -hmm. and then she left him mm -hmm. to go for the records. Ah, oh. bitch broke his heart. I don't, yeah. I don't think it's. <gasps> he had fun once, and it was awful. Her <laughs> name was Verity. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it. I, I think. Um, I think, um, like Adam was saying, I mean, in the Transformers comics that we had at that point, they were he was the duly appointed. Imports of the tyrant. Yeah. He just, nicely said. Thank you. Mm -hmm. He just went around in his own personal ship by himself, arresting people mm -hmm. or you know whatever, looking into things. He was by himself. Yep. And you know he may have preferred it because everything was in order and all that. But then he, he kind of had that when she was travelling with him. He had that thing of, because um, that's one thing that the humans seem to do in the Transformers comics, is bridge a gap. Yeah. The, the, I don't want to say humanise the the transformers, no, but no. they, you know, they they make them realise things that they've lost yep. through this war. It's like um, Pyro in Last Stand of the Wreckers. Yes, who says Prime was wrong, 
we don't need to protect you, you're here to protect us, mm-hmm. you know, to, uh, you know, from losing whatever the speech was. Um, but, uh, you know, the, it's that sort of thing. She made him realise how maybe lonely he was or whatever, and then she ran off to have fun with the rep is not thinking <coughs> about, you know, what was actually going to happen to Magnus. Mm-hmm. Now I... And then Magnus has kind of gone into this slump and gone off on this mission. Oh. Well, I think that's why he's gone off on this mission. He misses having company, Ver- yeah, the company of Verity. Yeah. Yeah. But that was that was really, really nice. Comics about robots, people. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what you can't quite get. Looking also, forward to this week. Also, World's Avatar. It's a little bit crazy. Yeah, I didn't I'm even know scared. I didn't know that you could draw Mikey that well. Someone's <laughs> world again. The eye patch and the Uzis? Yeah. <laughs> it was a little girl, wasn't it? The yep. Eye patch and the Uzis, that was genius. <laughs> and it came with these. <laughs> Uh, oh, that issue. <laughs> Anyhow, the next thing I want to talk about. Oh, actually, sorry, sorry. What does Dick Cheney prefer? Cheney. Sorry. What Dick Cheney prefers. <laughs> when he finds what he thinks is funny. Dick Cheney prefers not giving a shit about the third world. Or, Probably doesn't. Or, as I accidentally picked up too, which is another one that uh, we've had before, but anyhow. The Smithsonian Museum of National History has just opened up a interactive exhibit on whipping it out. See, I fully believe I broke a cow cows against humanity. Shit your face. So <laughs> <laughs> um, I just want to talk to us about I want to say I'm... about look look at the crayons, look where the crayons are going, look at oh, the, the, the crayons are trying to kill me. <laughs> crayons, look at the crayons, look at all the crayons, look at the crayons are so cool. I was doing so well before Toy Fair, I was like, I'm only gonna get Brudicus. And I'm gonna have to get Abominus and Seacons as well. Son of a bitch! Freddy <laughs> King, Abominus. It's like a bonus thing going on. Fucking sea cons! Sea cons! I'm really happy that I'm not bothered by any of this. Really? Really. Don't get me wrong, I think it looks cool. I think it's an ingenious little thing, but. I still love the fact that. Because they announced a bunch of blind pack dudes as well, a new bunch of them. Um, and I love the fact that they're continuing the tradition of hey, here's these five men teams. Uh, you'll find them in this box set of four of them anyway, and then the fifth's in the blind pack. That's such a good idea. Great idea. Because it, uh, purely on a sales idea, it's going to be... Uh, me, I will probably end up buying a few blind packs until I find Blastoff. Or even then, I might just buy a couple more because I'm buying Blastoff at the same time. Yeah, I like the... Um, I like the Creon... Um, <laughs> like the Creon figures. I think they're great. I'd love to have a collection of them, but... Um, Neve would... Uh, talk mm. to death. High yeah. shelves. High shelves. <laughs> That's, that's the thing, I don't have any high shelf space left. <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's one of the reasons I've said to Becca, no more, like, oh, whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because you've got nowhere to put it, and it's getting into places where, you know, um, it's just getting built late at night when Neve's gone to bed, and then Becca's leaving it out. Neve wakes up in the mm-hmm. morning, she's clambering on the sofa or whatnot, reaches up to a shelf that's got Lego on it. Yeah. So. But that's one of the reasons why I'm glad I'm not... Uh, I'm not tempted by these combiner themes. I found a Shapeway site that sold hands for the combiners. Mm. Yeah. Um, who else did the announce combiner wise? We had Protector Bots. Yep, the Protector Bots, the Aerial Bots. Uh, we then... about them. There wasn't like a huge amount of additions to the combiners. No. But the blind packs. Cheetor. Mm-hmm. Cheetor. They announced the next two waves of blind packs. Yep. It's like, well, the dudes that In- fill up the teams, Cheetor. Including a nose cone. Which makes you think, Possible there's going to be a computer on. Well, why not the doing a bomb on us? Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Where is my freaking mon- uh, Monstructor? He'll come. I want a Monstructor and then... Well, think about it. How many combiners are left? Mm-hmm. They're going to stab him in Japan. Create your breast force. <laughs> Road Caesar. <laughs> Create your breast force. Like the best thing ever. Can you go Bristol Duck? Uh, God. What, what do they go crazy? How crazy? Very crazy. Oh. The Beast. Fuck off. <laughs> Notice there hasn't been any uh, Dinobots yeah, yet. Yeah, Creon. Not really. I, I would actually like a, a Creon uh, Grimlock. Yeah? I would love a Creon Slag. <laughs> Not anymore, dude. Let's back that one up. You'll get a, you'll get a Creon Slug, but that's about Thank it. you. <laughs> Still Slag. Yeah. Still a Slag in here. But hang on. This isn't working. Suddenly, <laughs> suddenly, suddenly I agree with Hasbro and everything they've ever said. 
But yeah, I would love a Creole. I can't say it with a straight face. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna divert it then. There's something I did say, and I thought it was hilarious at the time. So I'm gonna say it again. Somebody was saying, "Oh, I can't believe there are all these new Creole figures, and they're just using the same old bits." And I was like, "Well, yeah, because they spent all the budget on freaking all oh, the mites head piece from the sea con. Oh, yeah. So it looks like a giant shark head. His face comes out of the mouth. Nice. <laughs> oh, it's so good. And no, who saw a bloody no come out? I want six of them. Oh god, yeah, shark gun in there. Six of them. Right now, thank you. We must we must at least find one block for Ralph. Yes. Ralph requires a new block. So he may form his council of blots. <laughs> right, uh, Rob, do you want to take another one? Anything you want to talk about? Yeah, I'm going to break from Toy Fair for a moment. What, you well, son of a bitch? Uh, is there anything, well, is there anything Toy Fair really that we want to bring up? You want to bring up some chimney stuff, so... Oh, actually, I will say one thing, Toy Fair. Yes? Uh-huh. <laughs> Rob, I will wax another man's rhubarb to have that guy of a figure in my hand, that figure mm. figure. It is so nice. It's beautiful. I, I mean, it is. It's like a an actual model from what's in the show. Mm-hmm. It's just sculpted that well. Does anyone else just want to run your hands across the ridge bits? Yes. It's like, oh. I want some sort of effect part where he's like ripping his own oil in half. <laughs> That would be lovely. I'm hoping it comes with like either opening or replaceable boobs. So and I've just hand noticed hand the fibro blades. Yeah. The actual bits where it's all like the the veiny stuff. Yep. Yeah. It all is sculpted. all absolutely ribbed. Yeah, it's all mm. sculpted. Oh, oh. it's got to be ribbed for her pleasure. Mm. <laughs> uh, yep, the fibro blades, hands, and head will be interchangeable. So not head, mm. chest. I'm kind of hoping as well. I think it'd be cool. And I know it's not something that always seems to happen a lot in the show, but the two orbs in the top. Yeah, yeah. So you can move them. I don't think Nell moves somehow. Nah, they pushing it, but that'd be cool. I'm saying now, the hands, the chest, and the uh, blades, fiber blades, will mm-hmm. probably swappable. I think the first thing I'm going to have to have him doing is just standing there going, Pressure Cannon! Oh, yeah. So, yeah, Fig MacGyver. Mm-hmm. I would happily drive a puppy for it. I think that's a bit harsh. Is there anything else to there you guys want to... Well, yes. obviously, you wanted to bring up some Lego stuff, didn't you? Yes, I'm not so. going to last long on Lego. Um, <laughs> and then he's spent. As of recently, uh, the Lego Chima stuff has me by the balls. I re- I re- I've really got on over it. Um, the lovely Mrs. Lick got me uh, the the one kid I would really after the Path Dragon. Mm-hmm. That's fucking gorgeous. So, uh, you know, I've got, a, I've got a bit of a uh, unforeseen bit of cash come in, so I ended up getting another one. And then Toy Fair rolled around, and they were like the first thing they showed me, and the first thing I saw was giant wolf based land vehicle that splits into multiple vehicles yep. with a chocolate load of wolves on it. Yep. The wolf is, wolves are my fucking tribe, son. And then it got worse. Gorilla Mech suit! Yeah, I'm screwed when it comes to that. <laughs> Don't you guy already has built a Blacktron Gorilla experiment mech suit? Uh-huh. You have to get one for your chamber and one for your Blacktron. Yes, I know. I am aware of this I one. I could somehow make Ice Planet one, I would. <laughs> <laughs> Um, what else was a scroll? You're on the <coughs> we're on the news page at the moment. Mm-hmm. What else? The, the lovely Chima packs. There's more of the speedos, and I'm still not that fussed about speedos. No, speedos. I want to get one eventually. Speedos, I have no real interest in collecting. But I do want to get one eventually because gobbins. Yeah, I mean they, they come with nice bits. I, I love these little. Yeah, like the little challenging bits. Yeah. Um, but other than that, do 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 do. Because there was some more stuff. Do do do. Good God, there's a hell of a lot of speed. Right. speed oh yeah, skunk. You've just gone past it. Yeah, skunk. Freaking cheaper skunks. And there's a card out, but there's no figurine for the fox. Oh man. So they've added the new tribes in pretty quick. Yep. Uh, let's keep going. Gorilla. Look at the gorillas, man. Yeah. They are quite cool. They're so funky. There's oh. the fox. All I want to see is just like... Have you watched the cartoon yet? Yes. Fuck it off, it? I enjoyed it enough. Did you? It wasn't out special, it wasn't like I was sitting there going, this should be better again. I just went, ah, oh, that's kind of cool. No, I want a girl next to it. The, oh, well, yeah, that's got nothing to do with the cartoon. No. It just, the tone of the cartoon was all... Oh, there's the fox. The, we just got past the fox minifigure. Comes with a little tail. Mm-hmm. Would you like a fox? No. Ah. Would you like a real fox? No. Ah. Would you like a giant fox? A nine-tailed fox. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think some of these photos are literally just look at what we've already got. Yeah, very much so. I'm just trying to get through. Chima's, Chima's not been out that long in the grand scheme of things. No. Black Dragon. 
that uh, I just get really excited about that thing because it's gorgeous. It's awesome. And you know what? The spring loaded gun on it. Yeah. Fucking strong as hell. I'm terrified yeah. to shoot that thing. Okay. <laughs> You know, maybe we're too used to Hasbro. I've got one of them. Hasbro's like reined it in, and we're too used to their spring loading things. Like, this thing is just like twang <laughs> across the front room, blinding small children across the room. You know that picture they put in where they say, "Don't shoot yourself in the face." Mm-hmm. Fucking that applies, and that right there, that that is one of the first new kits they've put. It's a freaking cycle that turns into a jet. Yeah. I do find it weird that they're going down the Hero Factory. Mm, I, I like this idea though. It seems to work out better than I think anything else Nero Factory's mm. done so far. But I think, and much like the rest of the Chamber stuff, I'm more inclined towards the Wolves. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think I'm, I'm more inclined to get the big wolf when that drops. Um, but it's, stuff like the gorilla's pretty cool. It's got a big chest on it. Oh, the gorilla, which is actually uh, part of the Hulk. Yeah. Um, it's just a pretty much a remold of the Hulk with the gorilla head and the hammer. Well, you find that with, with a lot of Lego stuff. It's, you'll see that oh, from everywhere. The crocodile is so yeah. gorgeous. Would Rob like a fucking out? Look at that. To be honest, I've, I've never been quite taken with those. What, the Hero Factory? Mm. I can understand why, definitely. Oh yeah, here we go. Lion Temple is your big set for the for Chima. It is a remarkably insane size. Mm-hmm. Oh, look at that, it's one thing! That is pretty damn sexy. It's, it's, I love the fact that all of these things are usually got the big wolf head, like a big animal head on. Mm-hmm. And then um, the Galaxy Squad stuff that I showed up. Yep. Tell me about the Galaxy Squad. It's like I was already sold on Galaxy Squad and then I saw this thing. Giant armoured tank thing that is a thousand and twelve pieces. <laughs> I will never be able to afford. Which it splits into an armoured tank and a giant shuttle death machine or combines into one giant armoured thing. Nice. And it comes with that little snaky alien dude thing and a bit of base for the alien. You're blow up with that. Galaxy Squad is a strange one. I like it, but also don't like it. Ah, and that. The freaking orange mech thing where the front of it jumps off like a little shawl. And that giant Hive Queen ship thing. Yeah. <sighs> I don't dislike it. But I think for my own safety and sanity, I <laughs> stay the hell away from it. I <laughs> Before I saw this stuff for, from Toy Fair, I was quite happy with the idea of just not bothering with Galaxy Force. Mm-hmm. You know what it makes me think of? Mm. The old Space Police stuff. Mm. You know what it makes me think of? The 90s. Yes. Fuck. <laughs> Which means you're doomed. Yeah. <laughs> it does. Well, thank you very much. I'm glad to be moving in. Ah, <laughs> uh, but no, man, I was sold already on Galaxy Squad, and now it's... Oh. So much pretty. Because to me, it feels like 90s Space stuff again. Yeah, oh, it really does. I love the little mechs. The actual oh, mechs yeah. are fantastic. Well, even the fact that the Series 9 blind pack, they've got that battle mech in it. Yep, yep. And that's going to fit in perfectly with them. Oh, completely. Side note, I got one of them. Was it from Mr. Taz? I believe it was. Mm-hmm. Can't remember now. It was There's lovely Mr. Taz. Mr. Taz. Lovely Mr. Taz. Um, you take the armour off that thing and that makes an awesome droid. So now I want a couple more from the ice point, please. Oh. oh just a top of a ring. Need some for my... I've just noticed that my... What? Huh? My, I've just noticed that my Lego robots appear to be amassing around a giant Sonic the Hedgehog who is giving them the Heil Hitler. Yep. Maybe, I don't think he's doing the Heil Hitler, I think he's part of Shocker. <laughs> he's an evil <coughs> hygiene. <laughs> oh, well. They're miniature Shocker grunts. Well, I do believe that Rob has something. But before we go to Rob, breaking news, Stu's just hurt his finger. Oh, no. Stu reminded himself why he shouldn't go from these with his teeth. Ah, yes. Mm. It's like some pliers. It's alright, I've got it now. Okay. Yep, it's all I thought it was. Who did Stu get in his Lego blind pack? I've got a Series 3 Samurai Warrior. Yay! Which shall be scrapped for parts. Yeah! Because oh. I already have one. Oh. Which means coming soon there will be my Ice Pound General, whatever. Oh. I might call him General Takeshi. Nice. Hey, Rob, did you have something that you wanted to talk about that wasn't Toy Fair related? Yes, syphilis. And you know what you have to do before you uh, are allowed to speak of your topic? Yes, I do. Pick a card against humanity. I'd like you to know I'm against this. Oh. oh. I'd love to see a game that's just called Rob Against Humanity. <laughs> well, we just renamed cards against humanity Rob Against Humanity. Uh oh. It starts with a blank. Oh dear. What have you got? Fully timed Holocaust jokes. Ask five, bro. 
Coolly oh, timed Lord. Holy Cross The worst one I've ever seen of that <laughs> is preteens. High five, bro. That's what I like about high school girls. <laughs> what, they keep getting older, they stay the same age. Um, jail's always a nice place to go with during the summer. So, <laughs> under 16, I'll get you 20 to life. So, I was... <laughs> Walking to the park one day. In, in the, the merry, merry month of May. <laughs> um, no, I was, uh, I was looking through uh, some stuff on... Um, Avatar on... Avatar. 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 On, um... James Cameron's Avatar. Yeah. Uh, it's a site called Amazon Work Brain. So I was on Amazon, reminding mm. myself why I liked it, because I stupidly decided to watch the movie again. Oh, I'm so sorry. Considering we'd, we'd done the round table, mm-hmm. and everyone was beating up the movie, mm-hmm. I thought, no, I'm going to give it another watch. I'm going to try and pretend that I've not seen the cartoon. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to judge it on its own merits. Mm-hmm. Whoops. Fuck me, it's as bad as Transformers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it is as bad as Revenge of the Fallen. Oh, mm-hmm. what a twist. <laughs> it is. It's a fucking awful movie. It is terrible. So, I, as I sometimes do with, when I've, you know, destroyed a franchise for myself, um, I <laughs> like to remind myself how much I loved it by looking at some of the other stuff for it. Yes. So, I had a look at what Amazon had. Um... And I found something. <gasps> what did you find? I found the art book. Ooh, shit, son. And I bought it. Shit, son. It's fucking awesome. <laughs> and you didn't bring it for us to look at? No, because you wouldn't have let me leave the house with it. True. I would have let you leave the house. No, this book is brilliant. It really is. Some of the stuff they went through, like the design sketches, what Angle was originally supposed to look like, what oh, his glider right. was supposed to look like. Damn. Bit of a change. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Oh, well, um, very interesting. Have a look at that. Yeah, um, gives you a lot of insights on the stuff. I can't remember off the top of my head, um, you know, what was what, but you know the polar bear dog from mm-hmm. um, Cora? Yep. That was originally supposed to be Anne's pet. All right. Um, the um, Appa was originally uh, merged with. A different animal. I can't remember what it was off the top of my head, but it was just bonkers. Some of the pictures, like mm. uh, sketches and that they've done, um, and some of the little insights into, like you know the uh, the episode <laughs> in season three where Anne stood there in all the armor. Yes. Yeah. That was a dig at the toy companies. Hmm. In what way? In the fact that they kept saying, "Can you put this into the show because we want to sell an Anne figure in this uh, armor?" Right. It's like he's an airbender; he doesn't wear armor. Yeah. He's, yep. like a, he's like a Buddhist priest. Yep. And they, they kept asking them to draw him in like these stupid stuff, like with an air sword and all this kind of stuff, and they're just like, no. <laughs> so they, they put that little bit in as a bit of a... I know. remember the toy line for Anne died on its arse. It's because it was all full of stupid shit. Yeah. I just remember it being shit. I had a Zuko figure, which wasn't too bad looking. The only problem was you couldn't do anything with him. The articulation was... Mm. Quite bad, and he wouldn't stand up very well. Yeah, I had a, I think I had nine. I gave him a little cat creature. I kept the cat creature and threw around in the bin. You mean Momo? No, I think it was Momo. It was weird. It, was, so it, didn't, it wasn't something I recognised. Mm. But um, yeah, it was a really, really good book. If anyone can find it, it is well worth the money. The only art book I've ever owned, really, has been the um, Art of Reboot, mm. uh, which is an amazing book to look through. Some of the stuff in there is just gorgeous. I'll, I'll, I'll love Reboot a little bit too much. Well, the, uh, one of the really? cool things about this is uh, when they're talking about the different styles of bending and how they um, described it to animators and that, mm-hmm. you've actually got um, across the bottom of the page these tiny little uh, almost stick men. Uh, one of the creators, when he was first watching somebody do like all these movements and that, yeah. like the Kung Fu and that, and he's drawing, drawing like the movements. That's cool. It's really, really sweet. Um, I haven't fully read it, but like I, I skimmed through some things. Uh, it's like the blue spirit originally was going to be the red spirit, right? And they had a completely different kind of look for the mask. Mm-hmm. But did actually when it had sent been sent to be animated, they actually sent a detailed um, sort of design sketch of the mask, mm-hmm. so that you know nothing was when they were drawing it from different angles. They knew the actual what mm-hmm. it was supposed to look like. Yeah, yeah. It really, really nice. It's like anything else, isn't it? The amount of work and love that goes into something comes up on the screen, definitely. The only problem I have with it mm-hmm. 
is the forward. It has two forwards. Right. One from the series creators. Yeah. Which is really nice. Mm-hmm. One from M Night Shamalaz. Oh, what a twist! <laughs> and um, three ducks in a man suit. Yeah, he goes on about how much his entire family is invested in the series. Mm-hmm. He basically goes on about you come in through his door, you've got like a Katara bending water at you on the wall, and yeah, yeah. all these pictures he's got around the house, and how this book, um, if you ever come around to his house, will be on their coffee table in the living room. And all this sort of stuff goes on about how much he loves the series, and it's like, why did you do such an appalling film then? Oh, there's some philosophy there. He's a shit director. Oh, what a twist! <laughs> he wrote it as well, didn't he? he wrote the screenplay. It's, it's for fucking it. awful. Oh God, you know, now you've said that, I'm with that forward thing. It just makes me think he's it's bad fan fiction. Probably, yeah. Bad fan fiction with a budget to make it. I, to be honest, I can see some of the things that. Um, they tried to put in, but they were so disjointed, they just didn't fit at all. Of course not, because he's goddamn awful. Who what a twist. Watch The Happening and tell me he's a good director. I dare you. Now, I love The Happening. I think The Happening is one of the funniest films I have ever seen in my life, and I will watch it on a fairly semi-regular basis. If anything, just the sight of two people, like, writhing each other, it's like snakes, going, but we had tiramisu together. It's fucking hilarious. Ooh. It's not meant to be. What a twist. I don't care how you look at it. Wind isn't scary. No. Ah, the wind! Has, have either of you two seen The Happening? No. no. You really should. I really shouldn't. Oh, man, you will cry your eyes out with laughter. I, I think I reduced myself to about 90% lost body water. Although, say, saying that about the book, I did find out there's one for Cora as well. I oh. I think I that one down. Cora's not a long series, is it? It's only got the one... 12 episodes. One lot of 12, and that's it. We need more. Mm. I, just wanna, I need to get around to watching the rest of Korra. You do. You really, really do. It, it, I need to, it's like anything else. <laughs> it's not because I don't want to see it, it's just time. I need to get some time. It's not because he doesn't want to see it, it's just that he thinks it's shit. It's just that <laughs> M. Night Shalom <laughs> keeps coming around to my house and teabagging me. Oh, what a twist. I'm just three ducks in a man's suit. Um, but no, that, that book, I cannot say enough nice things about it. Hmm. If anyone sort of is a fan of the series, just get this book. It's a lovely accompaniment. When this show goes out, do me a favour, mm. tweet a couple of pictures from it. Mm. That'll, that'll, that'll be nice just to have it out. And I'll retweet it from the old oil house Twitter. Mm. I'll, I'll ask the secretary to retweet it. <laughs> Stu, should we move to you then? If you're going uh, to I can do, I can't remember what else there was from... Well, I've, I've got something, so do you want me to jump on? Yeah, go on. I'm, I'm right. I don't think there was much else that sort of... There's a couple of things out there that I want to talk about. Um... Ooh. In the new Disney original, <laughs> in the new Disney Channel original movie, Hannah Montana struggles with all-you-can-eat shrimp for four ninety nine for the first time. Nice. I thought so. Um, I want to talk about the fact that we have had another beat, uh, machine wars popcorn reveal. Uh, now this is an interesting one. Yes, it is. Because it's a character that's not been in Machine Wars, but has been in Beast Machines. Which is a sequel to Beast Wars. So if you take out the Beast and divide it <laughs> by two, you get Machine Wars. I can explain it. I am convinced that Machine Wars, according to the BotCon continuity, is going to happen at the same time Beast Wars was happening on Earth. Why not? Yep. They're pulling it out. They're probably pulling most of it out of the rat anyway. Oh, completely. But as a figure, that's really nice. What is it? Should we say what it Striker. is? Striker. Striker from Machine Wars. Not Machine Wars, Beast, Beast Machines. <laughs> Beast Hunters. This one was Striker. Not Obsidian. <laughs> the large feminine one. I'm confused now. She was also in Animated. She led Team Char at the beginning of Season 3. Mm-hmm. Voiced by Tara Strong in, Be- in Animated. Which oh, freaked me out. She was big in purple. Do you remember there was the two legendary Cybertronian generals in Beast uh, uh, Machine Wars? No, Beast Machines! Beast Machines. Oh. One was a helicopter dude with spin lift fingers, one was a big fucking chunky bitch. Yeah. That's, That's a big chunky ah. So you probably find one of the other figures either in the box set or in the, the yeah. souvenirs will be some kind of helicopter replay. But who? I don't know. Hi, saying Skyhammer. Yeah. No, but that would seem weird that Obsidian was bigger than Striker. Yes, it does, but doesn't it? It's the fan club, TFCC, yeah. so he'll probably be made out of wheelie. <laughs> I'm going to Nothing wrong with a bit of weed in this prime. The, the, they'll scrape the bottom of that barrel at some point. I um, wanted to bring this one up purely because that is a really nice repaint. Yeah. And the character comes through really well. 
I, that, when it first went up, I was looking at it going, it doesn't seem feminine in the memory. I went, of course not, it's a striker. Yeah. She's built like a brick shit house. Yeah. She's built like a German Russian. Hmm? Half come come, come right. to my bosom, big boy. I'm That's such what a big player. Me. I have Russian father, German father. I am, I am president of <laughs> Daredevil Man without fear of fan club of Schmensky. <laughs> That's all I can think of. I throw a shot, but now come to me, big boy. Come to me and pleasure me, <gasps> weedy man. You see her? Not my bud. <laughs> so when Obsidian comes out, that's what you need. You need to get them both, and then just, you can stand and go, not my bud. Not my bud. <laughs> um, but no, I there don't. is shark bite in the water. <laughs> and the flood will come. I know. No, throw, you want to throw. There was a headmaster called Blood, wasn't there? Yes. Yeah, good. Yeah. Blood is in the water. <laughs> Shark the guns will come. No, he wasn't a headmaster, he was a pretender. Wasn't he? He's a pretender, sorry, yeah. yes. All, all I can think of now is, is, is Boris the Blood. Sitting there with a target master. Wait, is good. It's a sign of reliability. Oh my god. <laughs> you just created the br- best fan fiction in my head. What, Snatch with Drantorn? No. Striker comes to Earth. But okay. he's damaged. And must become a headmaster to survive. Okay. Alt mode becomes a truck. Big duck. Right. Big duck. She gets Boris the Tsar Bushkin as <laughs> headmaster. Hey, nobody calls us Arabat slime. Okay, how about no good slime? Nice. See, all I can think of now, because 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 I said that one line, is the snatch read on with transform. <laughs> Mickey would be blood. No doubt. I'm sorry. No I, doubt, doubt. I I can't get my head around the idea of Boris the Tsar Bushkin being <laughs> a fucking headmaster. Zombie Swindle would have to become uh, Boris the Bully. Boris the Bully, yeah. Boris the fucking Bully, don't you? Why'd they call him the Bully, don't you? It's like, who's Stephen, though? First inclination is Springer. And then, and then Tommy would have to be, I don't know. Ah, oh, Stephen would be Impactor. Mm-hmm. I can imagine Impactor. Mm-hmm. Take some protection from him. He's a bit bigger. I'd say Roblox. <laughs> No, imagine, <laughs> imagine if you will, him packed it. At, after last time of the wreckers, him and Guzzle have gone off into space. <laughs> so <laughs> Guzzle's Tommy. Maybe. <laughs> Bloody hell, what's that? After it's a while, <laughs> Guzzle has to leave him, and him packed it takes up a whole new job. Moving objects from one space to another. And he has to do this three times. But he makes some rules, which he breaks all three times. First time. He gets something put into his trunk. Turns out to be Arsie. Second time, gets something put into his trunk. Turns out to be Arsie. <laughs> Third time. I'm not saying that all three Transporter films are exactly the fucking same, but all three transport, tra- Transporters Transporter films are exactly the fucking same. No, no, he doesn't get anything put in his boot in the, uh, the second and third one. Yeah. Yeah, it's still the same film. The first one was brilliant. Ah, first one. Oh, it's just a... Imagine, if you will, Impactor having to put crocodile clips on his robo nipples <laughs> to power up. <laughs> right, I have to say it because the thought has been running through my head for the last minute. So yeah, okay, Impactor and Guzzle was Stephen and Tommy. Oh, bloody hell, Guzzle, what's that? Who's my dad, innit? It's for protection. <laughs> Takes from who? It's the Predacons. <laughs> it's not pointing his gun, he's pointing at the back. This giant fucking <laughs> turret sticking out. My gun. <laughs> How long are the sausages, Robert? Three minutes, Inspector. <coughs> Three minutes, five, five minutes, minutes ago. ago. Oh, now, guys, it's tip top. <laughs> <laughs> it would be brick top, though. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? I just presume you just like freaking. freaking swindle. Just like pointing outside, where well, was his third party break cons? Feed him to the bovine arrow. No, Swindle's Boris. So Boris ends up in the back of where the Abbey will become car, with a bag over his head and his hands tied. <laughs> Motormaster. Motormaster would keep pigs. Possible. Feed him to the pigs, Swindle. But they're not pigs. Ah, feed them to the pigs, did it? <laughs> feed him to the mechanicals. Cannibals. You stop me again when I'm walking. I'll cut your fucking transformation. Scrublets. <laughs> oh, yes. 
Yes. Which are just larger versions. That's so small versions of the Mechanibals. Why not? Why has there never been a third party Mechanibal? Uh-huh. It's balls with teeth. Reads, I've just remembered something. Yeah, the average scrapper. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I wish I could remember that speed so I could do the, uh, the whole thing. I need to watch it's it again. the fries. As greedy as a scrap. <laughs> so, so um, pull the spark and take out a transformation. I'll well, take a little scrap of stodgest. <laughs> so basically, that's all we have to say about Machine War Strike. Yeah, it was um, Snatch Transformers. Um, I hit on something and I've just remembered. Yep. Hasbro mentioned something about the Death's Head universe figure. Oh, yes. Yes. They, A, had no idea that Transformers fans would be interested. And B, fall, raised the question of, hang on, why isn't that out yet? So as far as Hasbro was concerned, they didn't know why we would be interested, and they thought it should be out on the shelves now. Where is it? Because we haven't even seen pictures. No. Mm. And they think it's ready to go. What well, I find quite disturbing about that is Death's Head seems to be taking a bit of a resurgence at the moment. Yeah, even if it is just... <laughs> I'm sorry, what, what was that? <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> Even if it is just one panel appearances. Building to something. Because he's in Superior Spider Man. Uh huh. Uh, what else is he? He's in Iron Man? He's in Iron Man, there's something else. But I know that Iron Man is literally just a panel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's just some dude falling out of it. Oh, you don't know about it. But he's going to be a full blown, right the way through the issue, he's on the cover of Superior Spider Man. I know there's a picture where he gets his word, Superior Spider Man knocks his head off. Oh, has anyone written Superior Spider Man? No. Mm. Bit fun. Um, yes, it's quite interesting to see Death's Head making some kind of reappearance. Yes, I, I, I mean, I've never really read much of Death's Head, but you know, I do love the sound of the character. <laughs> I want to see him in print. Death's Head is fantastic, especially um, in some of his uh, what? How can I put it? Out there roles. Mm. I mean, most of the time he crossed over with characters that weren't huge mm-hmm. or big. Things like the Dragon's Claws. It's like what well, I've got the the volume two of like the collector stuff. And it's mm-hmm. it's basically him crossing over with the Doctor, mm-hmm. him crossing over with Fantastic Four, mm-hmm. him crossing over with Iron Man. Twenty twenty. Yeah. Ah uh, yeah. Arnold Stark. Um, then it's him with his own origin story. Yep. Then it's him as just like in the background in a Doctor Who story. Mm-hmm. And that was most of it. It seemed very much just like let's just drop him in everything. But the way you read it sometimes is the blur at the beginning. It's almost like Marvel UK, their own character, he was front and centre. Mm. Pretty much. He was their flag carrier. Time. He was, you know, yeah. leading the charge. For a long time. Uh, one of the most interesting things about Death's Head is how tied into the Marvel UK Doctor stories he actually mm-hmm. was. Well, that's, how, that's why he's human size. Yeah. It's because the Doctor shrank him. So that's ever... how they got around the, oh shit, he's transformer size. How the fuck are we going to do this? Hmm. Did you, have you ever read the incomplete Death's Head? Mm, don't think so. Oh, uh, throw it at your head. No, not my face, my beautiful face. Because that, even though it's a Death's Head 2 story, it ties into the Death's Head 1. Oh, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah. I think I'd heard about that. Death's I'm really not a fan of Death's Head 2. I don't know, Paul's just like, spinning his tea out at this point. <laughs> he sucks, Paul. He does. He does. He, everything that made him Death's Head just goes out the window. Yeah, he just became generic 90s big muscly dude. Yeah. Urgh, fucking 90s. And normally it's not very often you'll hear me say bad things about things from the 90s, but Death's Head 2 is rubbish. Death's Head 3 is worse. Anyway, um, anything else anybody wants to bring up? Uh, a shed ton of bile concerning uh, Assassin's <laughs> Creed 3. And a shed ton of bile concerning aliens, colonial marines. Well, 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 we'll do that and then we'll finish up. So, before we do, Rob, pick your cards. <laughs> <laughs> I've got two. Fingers no work. Right. Alternative medicine is now embracing the curative powers of my soul. <laughs> <laughs> mm, rub, rub the rub soul upon you. Unless it gets the who. Or, again. considering I've got two question cards, yeah. why can't I sleep at night? My, my soul. soul. <laughs> I like the idea of, can I have two pounds of uh, rub soul, rub please? Soul, please. <laughs> yeah, just uh, get it down your lad, you'll be alright. Oh. You know what it is? Just for the mother renamed stem cell research. People are supposed to. Oh, what are you working on, Rob Soul? People like, oh, that's fine. Just literally. <laughs> welding mask, welding arc, and a terrier. <laughs> what are you doing? Working on Rob Soul. Every day, <laughs> it seems more and more like you're turning into Krieger from Archer. <laughs> oh, Piggly. <laughs> and this is the episode I watched over there. Oh, Piggly 2. 
It's learned how to feel. <laughs> it's still my favourite moment out of Archer. Just, oh so God, I, I almost... That's I, something that was announced before Toy Fair. Mm-hmm. We're getting Archer action figures. Oh God. They're doing a range of soft toys, which include the various cast members and uh, Pam's dolphin puppet. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> Anyhow, Rob, give me some sickening bile. Um, I'll sit here and wait for you to spray it all over me. So, I got <laughs> Assassin's Creed 3, finally. I've not had the time or money to play it sooner. Mm-hmm. So, I was really looking forward to it because I've been a big fan of the Assassin's Creed series. Um, stupidly be- uh, believe most of the hype. Um, and I got a little bored with uh, Revelations. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it wasn't by any means a bad game. I was just a little bored with the character. But um, no, I thought, right, this is going to be great. Started playing it. And you start off as Connor's father. Yes. I was like, oh, okay, I'll play a bit as Connor's father. I think it was two and a half hours later, I am still Connor's father, mm-hmm. trying to do several min- uh, missions, bringing a group of people together. Won't do any big spoilers. Um, you get your, your opening. And then I have I have to play another sort of like twenty to thirty minutes of child oh, um, no. Connor before getting to young adult Connor, when I have to do another couple of missions before I get sent off to find my mentor to become an assassin. Yeah, so I've, I've pretty much played three three and a half hours, maybe four hours of this game. Actually, it's probably more than that, and I've only just started. Doing stuff for the um, for the actual guy who's trained me to be an assassin. I mean, this, I've probably missed a ton of stuff as well because all I've done is do story missions. No, just to burn through. Just to try and get to the the character I'm supposed to care about. Because at this point in time, I do not care about Connor at all. I have. I mean, the, do, do you want me to help you care about him? Change his last name. To make that <laughs> Shut up. Okay. So, yeah, um, I'm, and the, the thing is, considering they, they promised they'd redesign the engine from the ground up, mm. all the old bugs are still there. Mm. You know, jumping from uh, a rooftop into a patch of uh, bush that I could hide in, um, to, you know, so the guards wouldn't see me, and he jumps onto the banister for the stairs. Excellent. And I press the B button to get him to drop off, and he just sits there. And Waving. waits for the guard to come into sight, uh, which was annoying. Um, also, the, uh, the this was brilliant. It was teaching you, you know, how to get your notoriety down mm-hmm. and everything, which, you know, uh, usually you run away from the enemy so they can't see you. You jump into a bale of hay or some other hiding place. Mm-hmm. And they'll <sighs> sort of forget you and leave you alone. Yeah, in this one, people stop chasing after you, but if the guards spot you for an instant... They come running after you and call in reinforcements All right. because you have to get you have to go and get your notoriety down. You can't just hide and wait for it to yeah, yeah. to disappear. It makes the game a little harder. Uh, a little impossible. Yeah. Considering uh, I had to pull down posters to get my notoriety down. Mm-hmm. Um, the posters and the guy I was supposed to speak to to find out about this were constantly surrounded by guards. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh my. And the piece de resistance. The, the bit that really made oh, me, sorry. the bit that really made me, um, you know, give up on the game uh, for today at least. I'm going to try and get through it because everyone says it gets better. Um, the uh, I went to the uh, printers because you can bribe printers to sort of stop the posters going up. Mm. As I left, it spawned me between two guards. Oh, lovely! <laughs> Literally, there was two guards standing outside of the. Um, Outside the actual printers, outside the front door, I landed on the sort of overhang above the door, mm-hmm. and I pressed B to drop down to the side so I could slip in behind them in the door, and it teleported me inside. It was like great; didn't have to worry about alerting the guards. But then, on the other hand, when it spawned me outside, I was stood right in between them, and no matter which way I moved, it started a fight with them, and everyone else came in running. So all that work to get my notoriety down was just straight out the window. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Thankfully, I managed to get away by having uh, one of them smack me in the face with his uh, musket and tell me not to bother him. <laughs> <laughs> you 
You, you're assassin. Leave me alone. Pretty much. He just smacked me in the face and said, get out of it. <laughs> As they're doing other games. Oh, my word. Maybe yeah. But yeah, I, I have a, such a ton of bile for that game. I am See, sticking with it, though, because everyone else has told me how good it gets, so... Well, apparently, uh, many games got good. Doesn't mean that I went through Final Fantasy Thirteen at any point. Uh, Becca really enjoyed that. Uh, <laughs> that's my thoughts on that game. Okay. Uh, so, if you're going to give it a score, a rating, out of five, so far, what would you give it? Two. Fish. Ouch. <laughs> There's the all the bugs from the previous games are still in there. The um, the story isn't particularly gripping me at the minute because, as I said, I don't care for any other characters because um, I've been built up with these other characters. And um, <coughs> yeah, uh, the good things about it is the actual vistas and everything are beautiful. Mm. Um, the the world itself looks really quite good. Um, but yeah, just gameplay wise. I, I'm kind of done with the Assassin's Creed games completely. They've just, I don't know. The first one I thought was a flawed yet good game. No, it was just too linear. Mm. Uh, but everything that came after just seemed sort of piss on my shoulder. <laughs> See, I liked it too. I thought it was. I didn't like the character of Ezio as much as I liked Altair. No. But I thought it was a better game. Mm. I, I just think they got a little too silly. I think it's the best way I can put it. They just got sillier and sillier. It just didn't interest me anymore. Should we move on to Hunter uh, Student? Because I think Stuart had something to say about uh, aliens. Mm-hmm. So, before we do, you know what you have to do. Yep. I think this is the last one of the night. Give me uh, that one. Oh, okay, you got uh, that one. And then that one on the top. Mm-hmm. Yeah, white people like a disappointing birthday party. Nice and simple. Right, I'm going to clarify the following with. I'm going to spoil some of it. Mm-hmm. And I also that I haven't played this game. I'm literally going off what I'm seeing and what I'm hearing. But what I'm seeing and what I'm hearing, I'm not liking. So um, basically what you're saying is, if you do not want to be spoiled, yeah. this is the end of the episode. Yeah, I would just, that would just end it here. If you don't want to know anything about Aliens, Colonial Marines, leave now, because I'm, I'm going to spoil something in it that's a plot twist. What a twist! Oh, what a twist. And now you guys already know. Yep. So I'm going to put it in there. So. Whip it out. Aliens, Colonial Marines is a video game by Gearbox Software. Sega, and about five or six other producers, mm-hmm. right? Somehow they have taken what should have been a really good game and fucked it right up. Yet again, this is not from me playing. This is me from seeing footage, mm-hmm. seeing reviews. Not one day review. Um, the AI in the game is completely spazzed. Yes. Aliens just run full leather at you. A to B, shot through. <laughs> not what you would assume an alien's weird. Well, you know, let's go around here, let's go around some cover, let's... It's literally just right at you. Mm-hmm. Okay? Your AI teammates are completely useless. Mm-hmm. They keep blocking you. Um, supposedly as well, and uh, yet again, I can't go off this, but the review I've seen basically said, it is not worth playing on any mode other than the hard mode. Because it's just not a challenge. Jesus. You can run through levels. Right. Run through levels. Okay. When it when it's just aliens that you're fighting, so when it's one of the three out of eleven levels where you're just fighting aliens. What? Yeah, yeah. Um, three levels you're fighting nothing but aliens. Three levels you're fighting nothing but Wayland Utani mercenaries, and then X amount of levels you're fighting a mix, and then there's a boss. Fuck right off. Yeah. Um. So yeah, you can run through them levels on normal mode. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so the AI is utterly yeah. bobbins. Um. We've all seen space balls. Mm-hmm. Yes. We've all seen the sequence where the alien comes out and dances across the countertop. Yep. And um, they decided to put a little Easter egg in there. Easter egg in there. Mm-hmm. There's a containment tube and there's the hat and the walking stick. <laughs> what they also did, and this is completely by accident, is the AI will spaz out and then glitch up a wall. Well, so instead of being stood normally, it's at a 45 degree angle trying to run. Stuck in a wall. There's footage of it. Wow. Yeah. And then when you overlay that music on top of it, it's just... <laughs> wow. Um, it just seems like it's been a comedy of errors getting this thing to release. It has, really. It really has. And now that people are reacting badly to it, it seems to be almost like they're just... <coughs> I don't know if it's Gearbox, I don't know if it's the other companies, but it just seems like they're in a desperate mood to... I, but I didn't see, but I heard... That, and this is literally, yet again, I heard... I have to clarify, I heard this isn't 
I haven't looked into this to guarantee it. Gearbox literally said, well, we did the multiplayer and somebody else did the rest. Right. So, yeah, yeah. Go with that as you will. But um, it's a it's been a game without a company for a long yeah, time. It's it been bounced from place to place, place to place. Well, it was originally supposed to come out on an Atari machine, was it not? It was supposed to be a launch title for an Go Atari on. machine. Really? Um, Did not know that. Was it Atari? I don't know if it was Atari at some. Well, the Atari's lost her hour a couple of years ago. <laughs> More than a couple of years ago. It would be about seven years ago, wouldn't it? Six years ago. Don't even remember. Shall how good that was. Um, well, it never actually came out. Phew. It was a console that never happened. I can't remember the, the name of the console, but <laughs> it, it wasn't one that is, you know, more than a footnote. No. Um, the Atari Fizzy Tron. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, uh, it was supposed to be a launch title for a console back in Yield, so that's how long it's been on the go. Yeah. Um, I mean, they still haven't given a release date for the Wii U version. They promise it hasn't been scrapped. Mm -hmm. It will. It will be now. I reckon so. After the fact, yeah, after this. yeah, after the fact that Colonial Marines has just been pissed on from a great height. There's no way that's going to out. So, now we've dealt with the fact that none of us have played the game, but now it's terrible. Well, I do know someone who's played the game. Oh. My manager. He told me he would rather throw feces at me than allow me to play that game because it would be less insulting. Wow. Yeah. That, that will do it. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> speaking of insulting, this is where it really got me, and this is where I ultimately turned against this game. I know where you're going. And this is where we're in the full-blown spoiler territory, so this is the last warning. Um, part as you play through the campaign, um, which is all based on like LV four twenty six. So there's have this hope, there's a slack on the lot. Um, oh, you mean it ties more into the alien films than Prometheus does? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, this is the canonical sequel to Aliens. Mm -hmm. Officially, through Fox, it's the it's yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty good. Um, you find out that the evil Whale and Utali have kidnapped one of the Marines from the Sulaco. Somebody survived. Dun dun dun. And you have to go rescue them. Yeah. And then it turns out the person who survived. Is Hicks. Yeah. And this is where it gets a little screwy. <laughs> little. Little, yeah. Because this is where you shoehorn getting a voice actor and you shoehorn the shit out of it. So, for people who don't. <laughs> yeah, you shoehorn it like a shake Um And for those people who don't know. For those people who don't know, Stu shouting shoehorn is the same as Stu sucking up a large man's knob. Yes. Fucking hella large though. Look at that shit. <laughs> it's um, fucking scary. Hello, I'm coming towards you. So the, so the basic gist of what happens to Hicks in the Alien films is Hicks gets burned by acid, they put him under, they put him in the cryo tube, the cryo tube gets ejected from the ship, it crashes, he gets killed by a bit of, by a bit of metal going through the tube. Yeah? That's what happens to Hicks. It's an unfortunate story. Ripley cries a little lighter. However, now Aliens Colonial Marines tells us that when they went into the cryo tubes, the evil Wayland Utani. <laughs> <laughs> Building better worlds with children's souls. Um, <laughs> that's the rejected part of the slogan. It's in the small print. Um, they could they used the ship to get there and got onto the Salako and only took Hicks out. Not Ripley, not Newt. They left him there. And um, they only took Hicks out and they replaced his body with somebody else who wasn't Hicks. And and then and then left, took Hicks with them, and then spent the next umpteen weeks torturing him for information. Okay. Well, this works to an extent. She said they're going, they're an evil company. They want to know more about the Xenomorphs. They want to know more about what happened on the planet. So let's bait up Hicks and find out. <laughs> However, this relies on the concept that either A, Ripley and Newt wouldn't notice that Hicks had completely changed when they got home. B, the fact that they knew that something would happen to the ship with a facehugger so that it would crash and then they hoped, because they certainly couldn't have planned it that way, that when it crashed, a giant piece of metal crushed Hicks' tube. <laughs> Or, and this is the one that pisses me off the most, they knew there was a facehugger on the ship and let it attack, even though it would have been even better for them to have captured said facehugger and used it for their evil experiments. All of which adds up to, why the fuck would you take Hicks out of that tube? Or why the hell wouldn't you take the rest of them? Such a... Who wrote this script? Morons. Really? C come on! Same guy who wrote Lost's final episode. I could have, honestly, I, when I first heard there was a Marine Survivor, I instantly went, oh wow, I wonder who that is. When I looked it up, because I was like, oh, I'm not going to play the game. The game looks terrible. I'm just going to YouTube it. Da, 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 da. It's Hicks. I just sat there going, what the fuck? 
anybody else would have, could have made more sense than that. Hudson. Yeah. Hudson yeah. survives being pulled through the floor plates. Yep. Somehow survives the nuclear attack. <coughs> yeah. All right, that, that's that Drake. is a slim line. He finds a fridge. Drake with half his face yeah, gone. Drake, burn up. Could have been Frost, Airport, any of the guys that were in that uh, that first attack and got separated. Yep. Because power through, oh, they've still got the signals. They're still alive. Yeah. And they never went back because the father would have been cocooned. Yeah. Reasonable thinking. Any one of them guys. <laughs> the only way it could be worse than it maybe been Vasquez. Oh, she should have a grenade in her hand. <laughs> Freaking Gorman. It's like, yeah, that, yeah, possibly, feasibly, they could have been worse. Yeah. No, 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 I think they, they could have thrown the grenade and found another escape route. Yeah. That's more feasible than this fuckwittery <laughs> of going, hey, we were taken from the tomb and replaced the body. It's proper moustache twirly evil. <laughs> and it doesn't fit with the rest it's, of the way that you tell me. It's so fucking stupid. It's, I just couldn't believe it. Sorry, the evil Wayland Yutani. We are the evil Wayland Yutani, building better worlds with puppies' tears. At this point, the Alien franchise needs to just give the fuck up. <laughs> just stop. Yeah. <laughs> it's just got gradually worse. Since Alien Resurrection, it just has got It's like worse. Alien Resurrection, I don't mind it terribly. No, it's... It's not a great film. No. It's a Joss Whedon written film. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's got Ron Perlman in it, so that's enough. It's got Ron Perlman and Top Dollar from Crow. Yeah. yeah. But then it does have the... The alien with a wound. Yep, which is fucking awful. Yeah. And the... It also has to go on to be being sexy as fuck. Mm, yep. Nom, nom, nom. Uh, but yeah, after that, <laughs> it just seems Sorry. like anything alien-related stinks of shit. Yeah, yeah, completely. Anything with the alien franchise ties to it is just awful. Both AVPs are terrible. Yep. A- aliens vs. Predator game was not great, but it was, well, to an extent it was terrible. It was very short, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. It, it it wasn't great and then just like anything connected to it, it's just terrible. Just can we just leave it? Yeah, I, th- I think it's time just to leave aliens alone. Walk Island. away. Just no, there's nothing new. Come on, no, dinosaurs versus aliens. Come on. Could, I fully expect there to be a sequel to Aliens: Colonial Marines mm-hmm. because somehow we'll made enough money, or somebody will chuck more money, in, and you will play um, D- 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 Hicks and Newt's daughter. One of Vasquez. Yeah, you, you, you'll play Vasquez, who went through the grenade explosion, and a trans warp is now bonded to Gorman. <laughs> you know what it'll be, right? <laughs> you'll play as Butch Schaefer, Dutch's older <laughs> father brother. Right? He was like, he's travelled through time. I may look familiar to you. Yeah, name look- is Butch Schaefer. You look a little oh, bit like man. Butch Schaefer. No, my name is Butch. Butch. Oh, man. He's, he's got like a skirt. He's got like a Mexican <laughs> skirt made of predator heads. <laughs> Name is Butch! <laughs> they killed my brother! Dirty damn aliens! He <laughs> <laughs> pulled an alien heads open with his face. <laughs> Butch! <I> just... <coughs> <coughs> it's coffee. You know what else bugs me as well? What's that? And yet again, this is from a review, not from my own personal experience. Apparently you only get to use the smart gun for about ten minutes in that entire game. Mm-hmm. And you, and Is there any APC it, driving sections? Uh, I don't think so. That's a shame, because you know who'd be a great APC driver? Butch Schaefer. Butch Schaefer! <laughs> <laughs> I drive it through your face! Dylan Jr., you son of a bitch! Just look at a pony. You look familiar. Uh, Are you watching uh, the Rocky films? I know him! Uh, you know what else as well? Let's put the shit out of him. Oh, God. Um, you find out about Hudson as well. You find a marine, look on the wall, big hole in his chest. And that didn't sit right with me at all, because you watch that bit where Hudson gets pulled under that floorboard. Mm-hmm. He ain't going quietly. He is shooting them in the face while they are pulling at his legs. Yep. So they probably melted his fucking legs off. Yep. I don't, and honestly, my older vision of that scene is he's shooting them, and then when his gun starts running dry, starts hitting them with it or knifing them. Mm-hmm. He melted. Yeah, he, he should have been shredded to pieces or melted or whatever, but now he looks fine, he's just pinned up on a wall with a big hole in his chest. Went for that hole, you think he was just going, ah. <laughs> how, are, how is any of the structure there, though, considering a nuke went off? Now, I can argue this one. It it's, it's, still, it's, it's still a nuke, yeah. But the generator was next to where they were. So maybe there's distance and anything underground shouldn't have been that affected. You and, and what you see of Hadley's hope is it's fucked. If you go down the path that it wasn't an actual nuke, <coughs> it was some kind of EMP glass generator. No, it wasn't. The, the, they're sticking with the idea that the generator went up and did stuff, but... I want to play as Bishop's Head. How would they be able to go down there? Because 
it's a, if it's sort of 17 days after the supply call was uh, overdue, and then they've gone there, surely the radiation would still be at lethal levels. Oh, there we go. They're all androids, as you'll find out <laughs> in the second game. Well, well hell, the ship's in it again. Um, it... No, yeah. having another bishop, I can understand. Oh, yeah, completely. And even, even like, the, the cutscene I've seen, when the reveal hits, hits him and looks at him and goes, Bishop? And he, the, that bishop then looks at his commanding officer and goes, it means the other bishop. And that makes sense. That's, you know, shit like that. Well, yeah. Well, it's handled, but it's just like, well, the rest of it... We're going to close this down now, I think. But before I do, I have a good question for you. Alien 3. Uh-huh. What are your thoughts? I quite like it. I'm not like shouting from the rooftops, but I kind of like it. I prefer the director's cut. No, prefer the original. Yes, because it makes more sense for the alien. But to be from the dog rather than the cow. It makes more sense because then it's all. Mm -hmm. Um, And I always kind of prefer that thing where the queen bursts out of her chest as she's falling in. Okay. And I remember when I watched the director's cut, I just went. Uh Oh, I I have another question to ask you about Alien Three. Oh. I'm going to ask you the Blade Runner question. Oh. Bishop at the end. Uh-huh. Robot or human? I think that might have been Wind. Okay. But there's also the possibility that he went, fuck that shit, I might get killed. Off you go. Yep. Um, what is the difference between the director's cut and... Quite a lot. Yeah, that one yeah there's, there's an entire the subplot about one of the um, uh, one of the prisoners seeing the alien as the dragon, mm. which is another way of saying Satan, basically. And he starts getting quite... Zealous about it. Isn't that then um, played by Paul McGann? Yeah, that was it. Uh, but what's the major difference? Yeah, it, it impregnates uh, a, cow. a cow instead of the dog. They've got like bison y things that impregnates that. And as I was said, as we're saying, at the end she jumps in and you don't see the whole thing of it coming out of her chest as she falls. She just dives and she's in there in like two seconds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> those are the most obvious ones. Yeah, there's some other bits. The commit your bodies to the void or lord section is a bit different as well. Mm. Which is my favourite sequence in that film. Why, why would you have it? But it's not Hicks's body now, so it doesn't have as much impact. <laughs> why would you have it that it kind of face will get a cow instead of a, a dog? Yeah, because I like that idea of it varies. It's you know how it's done a little bit depending on what it attaches to. Mm-hmm. So it attaching to a something more canine gives it a more sleeker. Yeah, yeah. But whereas a big bovine thing, I'd expect to be fucking big old bulky thing. Yeah, yeah. Cause that, that's the. That's the whole thing with it. I mean, I remember seeing the, the model kits for it in the shop. <laughs> it, was, it, was the, it was the dog, the dog alien sort of mm-hmm. thing. That's what it was actually branded as. Yeah. It's just one of those things. That's personal preference on that. I'm not going to, like, denounce you as a heretic for damn you when you're bull ideas. Um, I think the, the only problem I have with the original Aliens and Aliens 3 is the hmm. uh, just the fact that they are out and out sort of horror films. Mm-hmm. I just I don't like horror. I, don't, I wouldn't call it a horror film. Mm. It tries mm. to do the alien one thing again with just the one sort of enemy yeah. and the lots of tension building stuff like that to it absolutely attacking. Um, and for me, that's it gets me stressed out watching those movies because mm. <laughs> as, as I've said before, you know, Ripley pretty much does the what you call it thing, the scary movie thing of leaving the nine millimeter on the table and picking up the banana. Yes. Um, which just stresses me out beyond no end because it's like, why would you be so stupid? And then in, in Alien 3, she uh, leaves 9mm behind because there isn't one and goes off with the crowbar to find the alien. Yeah. Which is one of my favourite sequences of that film yet again. Just the idea of, come on, you little bastard. But then Aliens was just kind of like, you know, taking a, <coughs> yeah, taking a, um, a credible sort of threat sort yeah. of enemy and just throwing some big guns at it, which mm. was just fun. And then beating the shit out of it with a power loader. Yeah. Yeah. You think about it, they've never done that with any other kind of film in history. Like a sequel has never completely changed genre, has it? No. Very it's rare. Like you, you don't suddenly go from Friday the 13th to, hey, look at this military unit, fight like 50 million Jasons. Yeah. And a big fucking Jason. Don't, don't Jason X, because he was cool. Oh, I love Jason X. <laughs> Do you want some part? Or some premarital sex? <laughs> <laughs> premarital sex! <laughs> Oomph! Oomph! Death by a lesbian in a sleeping bag! Fucking giant corkscrew. Uh, love that film. I need to watch that again. It's, it's terrible. Stupid. I love it's it. The one where Jason was in space. Jason, Jason X. X. Mm-hmm. You know what they did as well? They did a Jason X versus Jason comic. Did they? Yeah. I'm gonna have to read so that. So you had Jason mm-hmm. as his normal self versus Jason X. I did love the. Uh, <laughs> it's okay. All he wants. All he wanted was his machete back. <laughs> I love that film. It's the t- there was a sp- this brief period of time. 
where some people seem to get the idea of how to make a shit film. Yeah. And there was a few of them. Dimension kept making them. And they were great fun. But anyhow, that's it for another time. We are closing this down now, so thank you very much, Rob. You're welcome. Thank you very much, Stu. Uh, yeah. And thank you very much, listeners, for listening. That's what listeners usually do. Yeah. Mm. I should have. I was confused. Apart from the one guy who's been talking to us all the time, he's getting quite annoyed that we've been talking over him. <coughs> and I was never confused. He was. Fuck you, were. Update 16. Blue. Bandcamp. Mm. Right. Night, everybody. Bye. Didn't even use a toad lure or something. Ah! <clears throat> In Switzerland, they call it mountaineering. Well, what the Swiss Alps look like. It's like the idea of somebody looking at the Swiss Alp. It's going, why is it called the Swiss Alps? There's only one. And it's sort of leading to one. That's clever! <laughs> It'll be awesome. There's only 17 mountains all indirect. One. And they all have a bridge between them. <laughs> yes! So you only have to climb one of them. Where else do you think they filmed that bit for G.I. Joe Retaliation with a swing in between the two cliffs?